Hello, buddy. Today we're gonna talk about something of a personal nature, which is my experience with quitting drugs and alcohol. I get a lot of questions about this. I've been hesitant to answer them because I don't wanna be a person who is just like, not drinking is like the defining cornerstone of my personality, cause it's not. I color my hair red too. It's like, it just is. I feel like I should address this because this is something, a video that I would have wanted to see like when I was trying to decide if I should quit drinking. So if you're wondering if you should quit drinking or you know you definitely should, or if you already have and just wanna see someone else's viewpoint, please keep watching. Okay, bye. Or just please keep watching, don't go bye. Okay, oh, oh. it's so hard to not say okay, bye. Keep watching. I've thought about making this video for a long time, but I've always hesitated to do so because I'm not a drug counselor or like an addiction specialist. I haven't read that much like quit lit. I don't par really participate in any kind of like sobriety communities, whether online or in person. I hardly know anybody else who doesn't drink or is sober. Like I, I guess I am sober. On the other hand, I had so many misconceptions about what quitting drinking and sobriety meant and what it would look like before I started this path. And I really wish that I would have just like seen this video basically so that I could have found out that like quitting drinking was an option for me and I didn't have to wait until I had like a rock bottom or like ruin my life or I didn't have to like drink an entire bottle of vodka per day to be considered like a person who has a drinking problem. But this is my story as a casually heavy drinker who quit and also someone who used to be kind of a stoner and quit that too and what that looks like for me now and how I quit, why I did it, and why I also think that you probably should too, which is not a popular opinion, but I'm happy to get into it. Before we get into like the story of me quitting drinking and drugs, I think that we should just talk about some background, some background info, my journey with drugs and alcohol. I think that it is more relatable than you'll want it to be. <laughs> For many people. Growing up, like I used to be super into like watching intervention and I always thought like that's what a person who has a problem with drugs and alcohol looks like. Like they're like a complete and total mess. They have no self-awareness about it and their family and friends have to stage an intervention to stop them. But the truth is that's not how it goes for many people, or at least it shouldn't, or you shouldn't wait until you get to that point, or you might never get to that point, but you could miss out a lot by not quitting. But I digress. Okay, I come from a family of people who like to have a good time. Not a problem. I always thought like, you know, my, my parents and my aunts and uncles, they definitely like to party and drink and do some drugs. And like, I knew about it as a child, at least I knew about the alcohol part, of course. And I just like wanted to be like them. I just thought that's like what a cool, fun adult does. Cause they were all very cool, like good looking people with good jobs, nice houses. And I was like, that's what I want to be when I grow up. So I always associated alcohol with being a cool fun person and my parents let me drink a little bit when i was a kid and when i say a kid i mean like a teenager at least 13 but they would let me have like if they made margaritas maybe i could have a margarita or like i could have like a little bit of wine with dinner or something and i think that their thought process was you know she's gonna drink anyway so we want her to like experiment and try it with us in a safe environment before we like send her off to college and she goes crazy when i went to college I went to um, Ohio State, which if you're from the US, you already like, I'm sure have a perception of what that university is like. But if you are from another country, I will just tell you like, imagine an American movie set at a college. And that's what Ohio State is like. It is just like, it is the American college experience. And my first year I didn't drink. I was dating this like really awful manipulative guy who was still in high school. You know, he was like, I don't want you to drink without me. Don't go to parties, you're gonna cheat on me. Whatever. Um, so I didn't really drink my freshman year, but my sophomore year I had broken up with that guy over the summer. I came back 
and I was ready to party. And then I just started going out all the time. Um, I was underage, I was 19. Okay, I had to move because there's a tow truck outside and I was making a lot of noise. Sophomore year, I started drinking and a lot of that was probably influenced by this guy that I met and he was like very good looking and charismatic and it was like love at first sight. Do you know what I mean? He was one of those people that like, I think people look at him and they say like, well, at least I don't act like that when I'm drunk or at least I don't drink that much because he was like that horror story and our group of friends. Our favorite thing to do together was to drink. So we would go to parties every weekend. Once I turned 21, um, you know, then I could buy us alcohol because he was a little younger than me. And then when he turned 21, then we started going to bars all the time. And that was our whole life. Like that's what we did every weekend. That's what we did Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday, sometimes Tuesday. Like it's dollar mug night at Outer Inn. It's really sad to me because before I became involved with alcohol and boys. I had all these interests, like I would write songs and play guitar and I was really interested in acting and singing and creative writing and then once I started searching for validation outside of myself in the form of rom romantic relationships and partying, like and people thinking I was cool, I let go of all those things and it's just kind of like if I could just go back in time and not do that. That would be great, but that is what happened. So after I graduated, I got like a, my first nine to five. I hated it. And I started going out more with um, women that I worked with. And it was all like a very negative bonding experience. Like we would just bond over our shared complaints. And I was broke and yet I still found plenty of money to buy drinks at bars and clubs. And honestly, I was never like a person who you'd be like, oh, she has a drinking problem because I like would always keep it together. I never blacked out. I didn't act like sloppy usually. At least I think so. I mean, I probably was sloppy as hell. I don't even know. Oh, I also smoked weed. So I was introduced to that by my cousins. And then when I met my college boyfriend, then he was like, I think he was like selling weed or like his roommate was or something. So we always had plenty. When I was hungover, then I would smoke weed. So it was just like a vicious cycle of, I was like always stoned or drunk or hungover all the time. And I always felt terrible. I never had any, any energy. I had so much brain fog. I had depression, anxiety. You know, I had like a lot of like cystic acne and um, like a lot of inflammation. And I really struggled with my weight and I would get sick like all the time, like cold and stuff. Anyways, this is all so sad to talk about. I can't believe that that's how I was living my life. And I didn't know any better because that's like what I thought was normal and what I thought was cool and what I thought everybody else was doing. And no one, no one said to me like, put down the bottle and like go read a book or something. I believe that one common feature of people who have addiction issues is that they have to continually like up the ante to get like the same feeling that they used to get. Originally for me, like it was just like titillating enough to like go to a frat party and like drink some natty light out of a keg. And then, and then it was enough to like go to a fancy happy hour and have like a like a martini or something or like go to brunch but then after a while nothing in columbus would satisfy me anymore i had been to all the bars i'd been to all the clubs and it just felt old to me when i was 26 I decided to move to Los Angeles. I had been there for a brief vacation and I fell in love with the city and I was like, yes, this is where I'm going to go. So I became an Uber driver. I started driving on Friday nights instead of going out, which was a huge sacrifice for me. And I saved up some money. I found um, one of my acquaintances also decided to move to LA at the same time. So we moved together. We just went out there and we didn't really have a lot of money or any kind of plan, but we made it work and it was really fun. I fell into a group of heavy drinkers 
and partiers because that's what I was doing, that's what I was attracting, right? For example, I, at the time I was very into sports, especially Ohio State football. So during football season, my roommate and I, who also went to Ohio State, we would go to our neighborhood sports bar to support our team. And we met like other people from Ohio there. Then all of a sudden every week, we're going to this bar, we're watching the Buckeyes, we're doing Irish car bombs at 9 a.m. When you're surrounded by that and you don't see anything else, it's normal, right? Like it's totally normalized. Or I met my best friend in LA at a bar. By the end of the night, we were doing coke in the bathroom. I would always just run into people with other drugs and like my friends were into it. So like we would do acid, we would do shrooms, we would do ecstasy. There was Coke all the time. Yeah, it just was like totally normal, but I just had this like nagging feeling all the time. Like you're wasting your time on earth. I felt really shitty about myself because I didn't like my job. I didn't like what I was doing with my life. I didn't like how my body looked. And I was just like really, really struggling with low self-esteem and low self-worth and just feeling awful about myself all the time in addition to feeling physically awful because I was partying way too much. So then there was an incident where one of my close friends got in trouble with the law because of drugs. It was really like a wake up call to my friend group and we all were all like, oh, we're gonna quit drinking and doing drugs. In that instance, I stuck with it the longest. I think I didn't drink for like three weeks. In that time, I experienced so much clarity. Um, this was on my third try at freelancing. I had already failed twice, which was very related to my drinking issues. So I was about to fail again, and then I quit drinking. It was like the lights came on, and I was like, what the f am I doing? I have no money. I'm $12,000 in credit card debt. I'm trying to follow my dream, but I don't have any money to do it. Why do I even live in LA? I don't even like it here. So that is when I packed up my car and I moved back to Ohio. I moved in with my parents in my hometown, which was a huge change for me. It was really the best decision for me. I wasn't tempted to go out because I didn't know anyone. I had a, a very difficult time making friends there because I really couldn't relate to anyone. At least at first, I did eventually make some awesome friends. But I really lightened up on the drinking. And even though like my parents and my sister, who I was living with, they drink. I wasn't like tempted to like go on a bender, you know, I wasn't doing what I would usually do on a Saturday night, which is like having at least 10 beverages. I might have like three and call it a night because there wasn't anything going on. So that was good for me. I took it down a notch with the partying and after spending about nine months living with my parents, then I had gotten out of credit card debt. I'd saved up enough money to go to Europe and become a digital nomad. So Europe is where you might say that I had my rock bottom. My favorite part about Europe is just sitting in parks drinking. That's like all we do here, it's great. Look at this view. I was 29 and I moved into an apartment with a bunch of grad students. So most people were like 24, 25. And we went out a lot. And I was living in Lisbon, Portugal for most of this journey, as opposed to in Ohio or in Los Angeles. The bars don't close at 2 a.m. there. Some of them do, but then you can just go down the street to the bars that close at four. And then when you're done with that, you can go down to the river where the clubs are and they, I don't know when they close, but definitely like in the morning the next day because I would watch, I had watched the sun rise in them before. It wasn't as easy to, to get drugs there, but we still managed. Um, I had a lot of fun. I was spending time with people that liked partying, duh. It's hard to say whether or not I regret this because I do cherish a lot of those memories and I think that they're so funny, but at the same time, I regret like the time that was lost, especially when I was hungover, but even when I was like out drinking and there were so many things I could have done while I was there and I didn't do because I was hungover. But I would say Europe is when I like reached like the peak of my drinking, especially the second time I went there. I would go on like literal benders, like go out all night Thursday night, wake up on Friday, hungover, have like a little bit of something to drink and some black coffee and then like just keep going. And I would go till like Sunday and then I would be hungover till Tuesday or Wednesday, usually Wednesday. I'd get in two solid days of work and then I would do it again. And while I was there, I did, I think the second time I was in Portugal, I did 
quit drinking for like one week and it was really difficult because I mean, it's so easy to get alcohol there. You can get a whole bottle of wine for three euros, which is like $3 and it's a good wine. So in the summer of 2019, I started seeing a therapist through BetterHelp. I started seeing a therapist because I had accomplished my dreams, okay? I had made my dreams come true. My dream was to start this freelancing business and then become a digital nomad. And I did that and I was still absolutely miserable. So lonely, feeling so shitty about myself all the time. Physically, I felt ill also. I mean, I didn't like know what to do. My plan was I'm just gonna drink myself to death in Europe. Like if I can't have happiness, if I can't have what other people have, like a relationship and a family and purpose in my life, then I'm just gonna die of alcoholism and look fabulous while doing it. That was my big plan. And I realized that that was incredibly self-destructive, so I sought out some help. So I started seeing a therapist. After a couple months of working together, she was like, why don't you try quitting drinking? And it took a long time for her to convince me that I should, because she couldn't convinced me that I had a drinking problem because everybody else in my acquaintance drank as much as I did. So I didn't understand that it was problematic. And she like seriously had to like get out the diagnostic criteria for alcoholism. And she's like, you check off like seven of nine of these. You have a drinking problem. You need to quit drinking. At least try it for a little bit and see how you feel. So I was like, fine. I'll try, but it's not gonna help, and I'm not gonna like it. Na, 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 na. Well, she was right. So the last day I had a drink was September 29th, 2019. At first, it was hard. It was really hard. Your brain grows to accommodate alcohol, and if you're used to only having fun when you're drinking, then from a brain chemistry standpoint, it is difficult for you to enjoy life, to feel good, to have fun without alcohol, at least until your neurons grow back, which takes six months to one year. That first six months was very difficult. I'm really lucky because I had a therapist. I just told myself like, whatever you need to do to get through this is okay, just get through it. So as long as you don't drink. So I was definitely like eating a lot more sweets. It's very normal like when you quit drinking alcohol to crave sugar because of all the sugar that is in alcohol. If you quit drinking, don't be surprised if you're like, you know what, I'm gonna eat a whole box of Oreos because that happens. I watched a lot of Hallmark movies at the time, the Christmas ones, in bed. I don't know why that brought me a lot of healing. So th that's like the physical aspect of quitting drinking, but there's also like the social aspect, which is also extremely difficult, especially when you're living with people who drink, all your friends drink. I would go to a weekly pub trivia night, which I love doing because I'm really good at trivia, but like everybody was drinking there and I had to switch to Diet Coke and then everyone was like, why aren't you drinking? You know, it was hard and it was hard to get used to talking to people without that social lubricant. It was just like a difficult time and like getting through the holidays. My family had like a big like Thanksgiving at our house and I didn't tell anyone that I had quit drinking. I just like my mom bought me non-alcoholic wine and I just pretended that I was drinking with everybody else because I just didn't want to deal with it because it was so new. And I'm not like that now, like now I'm, proud that I don't drink, but at the time I felt really stupid and like alienated. Because here's the thing, in American culture especially, is you don't have a drinking problem until you quit drinking. And then you're, it's like the scarlet letter. Now you're an alcoholic and you're just like a ticking time bomb and everyone just expects you to fall off the wagon at any given moment. In any movie or TV show where someone is like a recovering alcoholic, they don't drink, you can guarantee a plot point of that TV show or movie will be that that person will start drinking again and f up everybody's lives. So I really hate that. I hated that at the time. Um, I hate that now. My therapist encouraged me to go to AA, which I never did. I didn't go for like at least six months. Um, I went to one and it was awful. I hated it. You can quit drinking and not go to AA or rehab or anything. It really depends on where you're at with your addiction. Like some people do need to go to rehab or they need like medical help to get 
out of that cycle. AA's philosophy is all about breaking down the ego, which for any kind of marginalized group, whether you're like a woman or part of the LGBTQ plus community or a person of color, like it's not necessarily gonna be a good fit. They, they pray and they talk about God and Jesus. And if that is a like a trigger for you, if that makes you feel awful, brings up like past trauma, then you're not gonna, you're not gonna like that. And that's okay. If you quit drinking and you don't like AA, you're not a failure. It's just, it's one option. It's not the only option. You don't have to go. So I would say go to one, try it. And if you don't like it, don't go back or try a few different meetings and see if like it resonates with you. And if it doesn't, that's fine. There are plenty of other groups that get together to talk about sobriety. I'm not a part of any of them, but I will link a really helpful resource below. It's called Quit Like a Woman by Holly Whitaker, and she has a lot of great resources. Like I said, I'm not an expert in this. I'm just telling you my story. My therapist was like, I really want you to, um, find other people who don't drink and other sober people. I never did that. Here's why. I don't want sobriety to be a defining characteristic of my personality and it's not a criteria by which I judge people or make my decisions on who I'm gonna hang out with. Cause I don't care if people drink like a little bit and I don't care if they drink like a lot of it every once in a while. The thing is, is I like to party still. I go out all the time. I love dancing. I love karaoke. I love live music. So I actually do go out and party as much as I used to. I just don't drink when I do it. I just have a Diet Coke and have a good time. Okay, but getting back into my story. So I got through the holidays and then it was 2020. You know what happened next? A very blessed lucky thing happened in February of 2020. My best friend invited me to Cleveland for her birthday and she was like, hey, guess what? The house across the street from ours is gonna go up for sale. She's like, you should buy it. And I was like, haha, no. But then like the next morning I slept over there and she's like, let's just peek in the windows. So then me, her and her baby were like, cause nobody lived in, in this house. Like, ooh, it is cute. And it was like extremely affordable. And she told me about a program that I could get like down payment assistance. Anyways, I bought this house and I moved here on April 4th, 2020. And it was great because then I had like months and months and months alone in this house to just really like get comfortable with my new like alcohol-free identity, to feel strong in that and not miss alcohol, not need alcohol, just like grow my brain back basically. Because there's like layers to what has to heal when you're a heavy drinker. First is just like, you have to just put down the bottle and stop drinking. At the same time, like peel back, like why am I doing this? And then finally like building a new life without alcohol. So I was really lucky that I had like my therapist that was walking me through every step of the way. You know, COVID didn't really end, but there have been like times when it has gone down and then I was able to emerge like a beautiful butterfly from my cocoon and my house. So now what does it look like for me? Well, I don't drink, not at all. Don't even think about it, don't miss it. I think alcohol is gross and it smells bad and you really couldn't pay me to drink it. I also think that, well, I know that alcohol is poison. That's how it works is it poisons you. But you know, in the olden days, people had to drink because they, like the water wasn't safe to drink. So they'd have like watered down wine or like ale or something. It didn't have like a high alcohol content, but they were drinking all the time. But now we have this alcohol industry like feeding off of us. And think about how much money you spend on alcohol. Besides the money that you spend on alcohol, think about how much time you waste with it. And what could you accomplish if you weren't spending so much time and money drinking slash hungover. So I really think that it is like a tool that the man uses to keep us down. Trust me when I say that when you eliminate alcohol from your life and you heal from that, then you can do literally anything and nothing can stop you because you have a super, you have a superpower basically. Let me just paint a picture for you of all the things that I have accomplished since I quit drinking. Not to brag, but just to show you like what's possible 
when you aren't drinking all the time. I had my freelance writing business, of course. So then I started the coaching business and that's why we're talking right now. I went viral on TikTok and built a following of over 100,000 followers. I started this YouTube channel, which is just chugging along. I have hired four people for, for my team and that's in the professional realm. I've also made a bunch of new friends that I really like and we really have a lot in common and have like positive relationships. I now can afford to like get my hair done and like have someone help me clean my house. And I've eliminated a lot of things from my life that just like felt really bad to me. And I always thought there's things that you have to drink to do. Like, you know, if I'm gonna hang out with this person, I have to drink. When you stop drinking, then you're like, I can't hang out with this person anymore. So then you just stop. Slowly but surely things start to change. And it's just like the quitting drinking is like a little snowball at the top of a hill. And as it goes down the hill, it picks up momentum and it picks up more snow. And then it's like a huge snowball. What else have I done? I, uh, I didn't learn Spanish, but I got pretty far into studying Spanish. I learned how to produce music. I have produce several songs and I'm recording an album right now. I'm recording an album with a different band. I don't know, I have a house now. I bought a house, hello. So just like decorating this house and taking care of it and taking care of myself. I have healed from my trauma. I used to have an eating disorder. Now I don't, yay. And finally I quit smoking weed. That's new. I wasn't like smoking a lot of weed, but I have, I quit either like at the end of December or the beginning of January this year. If you want, I can do another video on like tips to quit drinking or um, what I did and recommend in case that is something that you're interested in. I have already rambled on long enough, I think for one video, but if you have questions, please drop them as comments below. I'm not here to judge you. I'm happy to give you honest feedback. Should you quit drinking? If you think you should quit drinking, even if you've ever had like an inkling, but you're like, I think it's going to be too hard. You should quit drinking because you already have the intuition that you should. And you need to listen to that intuition and just go for it. I know you can do it. Now that I am sober, I know quite a few people who have quit drinking and it seems to be kind of like spreading in my acquaintance, which is nice. And I hope that I can be someone that you can look to for advice or like inspiration. Things get better. It gets better. I'll tell you the first six months are rough, but you know, you can do it. Well, let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you later, buddy. Okay, bye. Why is there a tow truck? Just come, just take my car away. Just take it away. Hey Google, what time is it? God, what year is it? I'm so confused. It's 2022. What did I do in 2021? Oh, I started this business. Okay, um, oh, sorry, this chair keeps making weird noises. Okay.